Hi guys, hi. <laughs> is this your first? I suck at technology. <laughs> I was no, like, I do, don't know do how to on Instagram. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm hanging in there. I think like most, like most of us, hanging in there and um, just taking each day as as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Are you able to get outside? Um, let's not maybe not in this last past week, right? But in general, in terms of the pandemic and things that have been going on, have you been able right. to to do that? Yeah. Um, you know, I I have a dog and I have a seven year old, so it's like we have to do something. <laughs> and yeah. thankfully, I'm in a in in an area uh, in Chicago. I live in Lincoln Park, so <clears throat> my we have a lot of um, forest preserves and and places that are pretty spaced out, like where I don't have to worry about being on top of people. Um, but we always go out protected and whatnot. But yeah, we we try to get a walk in if we can uh, once it started easing up a little bit. But our our city is just now starting to reopen, so you know gradually, but nature is my thing i need it uh so i always try to escape to get oh. to some some trees and quiet and peace you know absolutely yeah. and it's 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 extremely healing you know and i think everybody has is uh is noticing how badly they need to be outside in nature right yeah. now yeah and it's such there's such um there's such a difficult like juxtaposition of situations right now, right? There's just so many things um, mm -hmm. piling one on top of the other, right? Where all of us are going, <laughs> remember back when yeah. we wanted to say goodbye to 2019, right? And now we're all like, 2019 <laughs> can come back. That'd be great. That'd be great. I mean, with yeah, some fundamental yeah. changes still. It's been a rough start, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a rough start. it's, it's basically, yeah. it's been a rough start and like a rough continuation of a year. Um, and I'm really hoping that, I have mercy, um, yes. indeed, indeed. I, I'm really hoping though that, oh God, I'm hoping something bad comes out of this. All of it. Yeah, I'm praying every day every day for that same for that same thing um you know it's just it's it's just a, the the time that what we're going through right now is just it's it's hard to process it's hard to process and it's been um hard to also try to explain to my 7 year old you know which right. is it's not easy <clears throat> but, um, you know, first with the pandemic happening and schools closing and not being able to see yeah. his friends and, and not being able to go out, you know, um, so trying mm -hmm. to explain that to him. And then of course, with the recent events and everything, uh, you know, having to sit down and try to explain that to him so that he can understand, which for, for his age, he's actually pretty mature and, and can process a lot of things that I didn't think he could. Um, so when we had the discussion with him, you know, he was very much curious, asked a lot of great, interesting questions um, that I felt were important. And so, yeah, so we're just, just praying. You and I were chatting, you know, and we always, we text yeah. some time anyway, right? We're always like, how you doing, mama? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, yeah. is, how is it going? You know, was, I know you were doing homeschool the other day when I texted you and then I, my brain has been completely, completely out to lunch these last, mm, you know, especially yeah. the Week, just like right um, yeah you know me trying to do science and math is hilarious um <laughs> I, i'll be honest you know i can make fun of myself i'm all right with that you know yeah no no one needs me to teach them the math and the science <laughs> uh i get the artsy stuff the languages my husband gets the more <laughs> art like no um math and science and whatnot but you know it's fun it's it's actually i didn't i was terrified when all this started i'm like how am i going to homeschool because it was also something i was curious about being an opera singer you know right. with us traveling right. not to dive too far off topic but with traveling like trying to figure out 
because my son always came with me, but now that he's in first grade, it, you know, school is like, yeah, we can't really release him for these longer durations like, like I've been doing. And I'm like, what do I do? So homeschooling always was a thought. And I was like, I don't even know how to get started. I was starting to ask parents and that I knew that were doing it, how they started, how they got into it. And then this happened. So I was like, kind of forced into it, obviously. Right. And kind of just had to go with the flow. It was really hard at the beginning. And then we finally found our rhythm. And I enjoy it. I'm actually now enjoying it. But Lord Jesus, I have so much love and appreciation for teachers. <laughs> Well, I mean, come on, like, there are some real, like, there's some real fundamental things, as we know, in this country that have got to change. And, you know, and one of them is that teachers need to be paid more, frankly, they need to be respected, they need to be paid more, they need to be put into a positions where they can really affect change in our students and in our children. Yes. And I love it. Oh, oh, I love this jamming. He says he's a teacher. That's awesome. I mean, seriously, I, I, I have great <laughs> Thank respect. You. I was listening to, oh, I'm losing you for a second. I was, I was listening to my son in his class because they're doing like Zoom classes with his teacher. And I was yeah. really, I was, I was really happy actually, because I don't know about the other teachers, but he has one teacher. Uh, um, his name is Mr. Reardon. They're all like English, right? But, but oh. Mr. Reardon, I felt I was so proud in this moment. I was so happy to know that he took time out of the class, obviously, as, as he should. I mean, this is should go without saying, right, to discuss yeah. what was going on, right, in the world and in this country. Good. And, and they're 10, right? So they're really at a place where this is now the time to start really talking to them about this and, and in a way that they can understand, of course, and hopefully not without fear, right, but to, to really educate Absolutely. them. And it was just Absolutely. lovely to like, it was just lovely to hear the teacher <clears throat> doing this because I feel like, you know, it has to start here. You know, we were just saying this on the phone call before that our children don't know hate until they're taught it. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's, 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 in some ways it's so simple and it's like, and how have we gotten it so wrong for so long? It's painful. I, you know, I posted on my Facebook the other day, yesterday, I was, you know, you see these things and you hear about this, you know, but like it really, yesterday trying to do yoga, I just lost it. It's all this buildup, not only with the pandemic, this coronavirus that's affecting a lot of, you know, black people, then you're in, uh, and everybody, but you know, like in, in, in our communities here and then having to deal with, with all this uh, racial, uh, police brutality and systemic uh, racism it's just it was so much after this week that trying to as soon as she said release your tension like five minutes and you're sitting in this pose I just completely lost it it was just I you need to get it out you know it was just like this guttural sob that I was just like I cannot believe that we're still having to deal with this it's it's mind boggling and so frustrating and so infuriating that we're still having to go through this and, and, and try to bring about the change that we need so desperately, so yeah. desperately and way overdue. So overdue. It's not even, you know, it's, it's embarrassing and inhuman you know, by how overdue this. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's, it, but now that's what my son was saying. He's like, oh, I don't understand why anybody doesn't have the same things as everybody else. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it sounds so simple. I yeah, know. Here we are, you know, the things that we try to teach our children at a young age here as adults, you don't see the adults doing that, you right. know? So it's, whoo, girl. Yeah, it's a time. It's a time. It's a lot. It's yeah. so hard to look at the culture that you live in and see how broken it is when you as a human, you know, feel feel love towards the people that you love, you know. Yeah. 
like when I, it's like when I look at you and when I look at all my friends and I, I have nothing but love for you for who you are as a person, right? And so, right. and then mm -hmm. it's so painful, I think, to see the rest of it and to feel, um, just, ugh, I, I don't have the words and I don't, I don't really want to talk too much. <laughs> I think that it's, um, it's, that's yeah. not, you know, what, what I, I think the, is that's important. the hopeful thing is that now, um, hopefully with what's going on is that people start really having these conversations and really taking note and, and being more aware and taking action, you know, mm -hmm. because we can talk all about it. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then people forget, you know, right. Things pass, it dwindles down and then that's the end of it. Well, no, no, and, no. And unfortunately, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, and we know this, this is, this is an unfortunate part about human nature and, and I really try very hard not to like put put blame on at least the people that I know and sure I, I can put blame on you know the people that run the country but um, <laughs> but like if it's not on your doorstep people don't feel the imminent danger exactly right all right and I think that if you can't like as a human find a way to be empathetic to what your fellow human is going through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there's just no hope forward in the international community of the opera world mm -hmm. are you feeling the same difficulties and the same oppression that there is in the world uh besides what's happening yeah i mean well let me take that back because i i don't sing as much uh, overseas as I do here. Um, I've been a couple of places, but I mostly sing here in the US. Um, so definitely not to the level that I that I experienced or seen here. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, you know, thankfully, thus far in my career, the group of people, whether it's here in the US or, or in Europe, um, it's been respectful. In, in terms of like what the group that I've been around, I haven't had to witness any, any of the kind of tensions thus far that, you know, that we're seeing here in the, in the international opera world. But, right. um, but I do have colleagues that have, so I do know it's there right. for sure. Um, and, you know, I take it personally, you know, if it happens to one, you feel like, that's happening Absolutely. to you too, or how you know. So, <laughs> so um, it course, hasn't yeah. directly happened to me, but I do have colleagues that, yeah, it has. So it's, you're the same way. Like we love the people that we love ferociously, and yeah. you know, I'm probably yeah. I'd probably be more I'd probably be more violent to somebody that was hurting a friend of mine than I would be to somebody who was trying to hurt me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> So, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so it's, it's, I find it really. <laughs> I hear you. Is that we but have I, been like purposefully pitted against our fears. So, and not just each other, but just we have been, we have been trained to react in our lives to fear and and fear alone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's no way to make a clear decision about things when you're acting in fear. No more fear of anything. Move forward from this. Yeah, yes. Have the conversations, take the actions and vote. God. Oh my God. Y'all better <laughs> vote. You hear me? <laughs> vote. I know. Say it again. We'll just do like a Please, chorus. Jesus. Right? Just do but a yeah. long chorus of like, vote, 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 vote. I'll, I will try to hold that note out as long as I, as long as I can. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it, you know, it, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're having the discussion that I've had so many, oh God, the messages that have come this week from so many of my colleagues and friends and people I haven't talked to in years just to check on me, to see how I'm doing, to tell me that they love me, that they're out there either marching or, or donating to organizations. They're putting words to action and and i was so touched and and grateful that this is we just got to keep it keep it going and and praying 
I'm always I'm the optimistic one. I always am. Uh, you know, I don't try to live in a fairy tale state of mind, but um, but I have to believe that there's hope and that yeah. it won't maybe okay. it's not going to happen automatically in right way. There's a long way to go, but we're, the dialogue is starting and the action, and then just remember right. to vote. Be vocal Absolutely. and be there. Make your voice. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so a little bit of questions just on a musical side of things. Because yeah. that, that is technically what we do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes we used to. <laughs> do I think? <clears throat> I know. I feel uh -huh. like, like cobwebs are going to just like spill out of my mouth right now. Like, <laughs> Gosh, I know. I am. I'm right there with you. I am right there with you. So actually, you actually, I have to say before, before we move on to that, only because now Christian and Sasha have both asked the same question. And I think, yeah, I think everybody would love to know. Christian says, is it appropriate to reach out to your black colleagues and your friends? And what's the best way to do it? Um, and, and Sasha says, I had the same question. I don't want to overwhelm my, my black friends with messages. So I think this is really valid. And I think that sure. everybody everybody has a different way of approaching it so well first of all thank you for even asking i think people are very scared to because they don't know what to say but ask and you know your your black friends will will absolutely tell you and uh and appreciate you asking instead of not you know um for me i can't speak for everybody everybody handles these situations differently uh for me it was very simple um just just checking in just letting you know i love you i'm with you let me know if there's anything i can do and that was it and for me that's all i needed it wasn't overwhelming it didn't make me have to get into long drawn out conversations it was just straight to the point like i see you i hear you i'm with you checking in on you i will do what i can to to help um Re let me know if you need anything and and that was it so for me that was already helpful and uh you know some asked like organizations they could don donate to or or they went online themselves and just figured it out you know it's all over a lot of people's social media and i posted it as well um ways to help so i think uh, yeah absolutely i think you can check in on your black friends Ooh, just say hey quick message quick call whatever to say I love you I'm thinking of you I'm here if there's anything I can do to help just let me know and they'll tell you they'll tell you yeah and maybe we can even open it up to like what do we think what do we think the classical music world particularly since that's what we're involved in uh what do they have to do moving forward well gosh that's a great question um I think kind of along the lines like I said uh, is is starting the dialogue for sure um I think it helps to see more representation, um, not only on stage, but off stage, behind the scenes and, and every every area, you know, just more um, of us, of any of, of uh, diverse, diversity um, in general, just on stage and behind the scenes. I think it's, it's a collaborative effort that we need to see more of that to start getting um, that representation on the stage. Uh, I, I am seeing a lot of opera companies that have spoken out, which is fantastic and wonderful. And, and it's, it's good to see that this is, is starting the dialogue, the hard dialogue that's been necessary to have. So I would hope that just more representation and, and not only on stage, but off stage as well, behind the scenes, you know, and the artistic development and casting and, uh, meet in media, in um, public relations, whatever, administration, um, just, just more of that. Just keep it, keep it coming. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with all of that. <laughs> I just, I, yeah, I flat out agree. I the, the reason I love to sing in general or why I was drawn to this art form because uh, first of all, I never thought I was going to be an opera singer. I was really into musical theater. So my path, my journey has led me down the operatic path and I never saw that coming, um, but here I am. But um, in general, just with performing, I love the intimacy 
I was always drawn to that connection with the audience. You know, I feed off of that energy. And in general, I was, you know, when I started in high school in a small auditorium, I could feel that a lot more because it was small. Um, it just felt more right. intimate and connecting. In bigger spaces, you know, I sure I can still get that, but it's so massive sometimes that I would just be like, <laughs> "Woo!" Just worry. I'm I'm worried more about the technical aspect instead of sometimes like the the connection like that I like to have, you know. But I, I like singing in both. But I think for me, I I personally love the the smaller houses in terms of just like how intimate it is there there was one house i sang in i'm trying to remember oh gosh where it like all the seats were like all around but like literally like where the stage was like say there was like seats that like oh, were not even right. it was so close and some people were like ah! like <laughs> like a lot some singers like oh this is weird and i loved it because i love seeing some people's reactions or like seeing some lines to them and it, it just felt like like they were just in it real part of the story it was it was cool for me so um but yeah i i love how big houses too you know i'm not gonna <laughs> say i don't but i yeah the difference is <laughs> my, after having a kid i i got a lot more <laughs> umph to it and volume I, but like well you know i love your voice well thank you so, <laughs> I, I love yours <laughs> Well, it was just like, it was like, I acted like a complete fool when I saw you at the end of Porgy and Bess because I came backstage and I was just like, was, <laughs> I just wanted it. You were just, I just, it was just uh, so beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, but really. That was I mean, an experience, you, man. Wow. I was going to ask you actually a little bit about it just because mm -hmm. I was, oh, I love, I mean, I've loved Porgy. I, I used to listen to Porgy and Bess when I was a child, like on repeat. And yeah. I know all the songs and I know all the words and right. it was like what I listened, it was like what I listened to all the time. We know I the recording with Leontine Price, right, of course. Um, oh. So, you know, so I just, I have her like, oh, I just have uh. her. So when I sat <laughs> in the theater, it just, oh yeah, it just gave me chills because it also took me back to being a kid in a way yeah. and yeah, it, was, okay. it was emotional it was emotional for me and I can't imagine I mean I wonder what yeah just tell me about that whole thing because it was you know there was a does, there was a power I, I was late to the game I grew up listening to it for sure but like once I became a an opera singer like all of my colleagues would be going on these tours for Porgy and Bess and I'm like nobody's asking me to sing Porgy and Bess <laughs> you know like I was like I was thinking, like, can I not sing this? Or what's going on? But um, I didn't, like, literally get to, I have always sung Summertime, like, you know, in high school. It's, like, one of the first arias that my teacher gave me to learn. Um, but, you know, I grew up watching it or listening to it. Um, but, like, actually, it was, I guess, now two years ago, three years ago. If Morris is on here, he would know. Uh, they, I sang it in the concert version, the unedited uncut version at University of Michigan because I went and got, I went there for my yeah. for my uh, master's degree uh, so it was just the concert version and it was my I just remember that first day of rehearsal I was so scared because all these people have song for and bus knew all the roles I mean Chauncey Packer can sing Clara he can sing <laughs> he can sing bus he can sing sport <laughs> <laughs> that people that just knows everybody's part okay <laughs> and I was like new ish so like I come in and just oh my god I cannot explain that first experience on that first day of music rehearsal just the joy the, the feeling of family uh it felt like a family reunion I felt like I was at home on Thanksgiving with all my cousins sitting around the table yeah Nora you know <laughs> uh it was just so just welcoming and and open and i hadn't felt that in a while uh you, you know i've always had great experiences but it was just something different about this one about porgy and Bess that just felt like home if that makes any sense it just felt like and it it was so special to just be on that stage with 
so many black singers and and on stage in one place and i had never experienced i had not experienced experienced that up until then and so it was overwhelming and it's just so much joy i mean i love the piece i love the opera i love the music uh you know and so yeah it was just incredible and then getting to do it like i, I called it my poor game best season because from that moment on then i got booked to do it right uh, for the next couple seasons in different houses and i i loved it i just loved being with everybody and you know i got to do it in amsterdam after they had already done it in london and it was so um wildly received and people loved it so again being the newbie jumping on that was the first time i was in the production like having to be in costumes it wasn't the right. concert version it was production it was in amsterdam and i had the most amazing time amazing time first of all it's amsterdam it was fun in amsterdam <laughs> <laughs> and with these with these people, my colleagues, man, we just had too much fun. It was just it was such a great time. Uh, so yeah, so and then getting to do it at the Met was of course historic, and I was so grateful to have been a part of that, to witness that for so many of my colleagues, to see them on that stage that first night. I mean. Now, it, it, you know, I, I remember running backstage when the curtain came down on opening night and just to see the emotion of so many of my friends who are just experiencing this, this amazing experience. Yeah. It was just, it was overwhelming. So yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, I mean, I, uh, it's so good to hear, you know, and I mean, I, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I, I don't have any words really. And it was amazing. And I was just like, I want to It's a true ensemble. Like, <laughs> it's yes. just a true ensemble. Like, there is, there's no chorus or, you know, it, it, these are all solos, man. They can, woo, these voices that I have never heard or hadn't gotten the, the blessing to be actually on stage and hearing it. And, oh, woo. Woo. Oh, it, was, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learn from every single one I'm on stage with. It's a learning experience. There's areas where I'm weak and I see my colleagues, they're strong and I'm like, how do you do that? You know, or I watch because I love to observe and see how people have mastered their craft or an area where I'm weak. And I'm, and I will be that person that I always have this mentality of a student where I'm willing and eager to learn from my colleagues, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I just like, how do you do that? I have trouble with this part how, or with a language. You're fluent with that and you're American. How do you make it sound so authentic and, and organic? How, how do you get that? I'm getting tongue tied, you know? Uh, how do you make that spin? How do you do that floating thing or get that chest voice? Right. And they're always, luckily thus far for me, I've, I've not, I haven't been met with anybody who's like, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> they're like, no, oh, yeah. no, neither. Get you me in the either. practice like, Everybody's like, oh, what is this what I try yeah. to do? Yeah, yeah. Like, let's let's go in the practice room. I'll show you real quick for like five minutes how to. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, I I'm constantly in awe, in awe. Yeah, totally. Of what Absolutely. Oh, I lost I lost you a little bit there, but like. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, I was just saying I'm in awe constantly when I'm on stage with with people of of what they're doing and how they're doing it. Yeah. You know. It's a great place to be. It's a great place to be, and I always say we have the best seats in the house. Because we get to stand yeah. right next, we get to stand right next to each other, right? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. A, that's the best seat for me. <laughs> Nora actually just asked, "Do you two still have teachers now?" Yeah, <laughs> I do. I haven't been able to see him. <laughs> um, you know, I I worked with Stephen King. He's at he was at a uh, Rice University, um, <clears throat> but I haven't. You know, I I got to see him when I was at LA Opera last season doing Servilia and Clemenza di Tito, because that's where I met him. I was a, when I was a young artist there at LA Opera is when I met him. Um, he's a fantastic technician. Uh, he worked wonders for me. I love him dearly, uh, but I haven't gotten to see him in a while. But um, when I was here in Chicago, since this is my home base, I did get to see Julia Faulkner. She's lovely. Um, she's been a great help here as well. 
So Gary asks a question, which I think is good, is how do you both know when you found the right teacher? And how do you know when you've learned everything you can from them? Oh, that's an interesting question. That's a great question. Yeah, very interesting. Um, for me, I go by feeling a lot. I, I observe as well. So if I'm interested in somebody, I try to get in and observe a lesson before I um, take one. And if I'm interested just by watching how they set the environment with their students, then I will inquire to take a lesson from them and see how we connect. Um, so you, I feel like you just get a feeling when somebody's working for you or not, um, yeah. how they're, what they're telling you and how you're able to process it. And if it feels good and you feel like you're making progress and, you know, oh. um, and when you've learned everything you can from them, that's a good question. Like for me, I think that if, if, for me, what I found, like when I have a teacher or a coach that works for me, I, uh, I generally never assume that I'm going to all of a sudden learn everything I can from them and never need them again. Because what I think, I always think of coaches yeah. and teachers like, um, like mechanics, <laughs> right? And yeah. so your, your car, like your, somebody said to me the other day, and I swear to God, I was like, it's like the best compliment when somebody's like, your voice is like a Ferrari. So if you feel a piece of sand, in the pipe somewhere, you're gonna feel it because everything is so in tune. And I was like, thank nice. you. Thank you. I right? love analogies, yeah. But isn't that amazing? <laughs> your voice, yeah. it's the same thing. Your voice is like a well-tuned Ferrari and you always have to take it into the mechanic at some point or another. So one of my amazing fans, her name is Anna. She always asks this question and I think, Hi, it's, Anna. Fantastic. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. So the question is during this period of time of quarantine, right? If you could be quarantined with any three characters that you have played in your career thus far, who would you choose to quarantine yourself with? <laughs> wow, Anna. Good Isn't that fun? question. Who would I quarantine myself with out of the characters that I've sung? <sighs> Liu. Liu's one. Susanna, because I love her feistiness and she's always thinking ahead. She's a smart cookie, that one. I love Susanna. Um, and who else? You know what's going to be fun? I love Norina from Don Pasquale. It was such oh, a fun yeah. role to play. And she's sassy and and on top of it, too. You know what? My, even Musetta as well. Because there's a, there's a part of Musetta that's definitely my personality. <laughs> you know, just, just like fun. That. So, yeah. So, I picked four. <laughs> okay. I think four. it's going to be a party at your house. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I could use the party. I'm my God, it's so lonely. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I got my husband and my son, but yes. <laughs> oh, but listen, look, we love our families. I love my son. You know, my mother is, you know, I love her sometimes, like normal. <laughs> and like, which is okay. Look, it's a special relationship. I'll write about it, you know, 40 years from now. But, um, but yeah, there's only so many conversations you can have with the same couple people in your household. And then they're the people who are all by themselves, you know, it's, it's like this time yes. period, this, this time is really, um, yeah. it's a, it is a test of relationships, right? That is well, true. Thank you so much for the questions and for asking me to be on today and take care of yourselves out there, everybody. I love you. Stay strong, stay kind. And we vote. love you. We love you very much. Yeah. yeah. Oh, please. Thank you. Thanks, Thank thanks you. again. Thanks for letting me babble as well. Um, you know, and well, you and I could go on forever, so it's okay. I'm constantly babbling. I'm like, did I answer the question? That's what I think <laughs> midway through. Like, did you even get to the question? <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, I'm and nervous about that. <laughs> I think any, everything and anything that, you know, that you have to say and that we can discuss is going to be great, you know, because it's always, uh -huh. always interesting, so... Thank anyway, I, I send you so much love. Thank you. Same and to you. So all the strength you. and everything. And let me know, of course, if you need anything. Thank and you. Love you. So much love to you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Mwah. Bye. Bye.